Howdy. In this first example, this is a really good problem. In order to introduce what I mean by calculating your work and integrating your forces in the direction of motion. Okay, so let's take a look at number one. It says a box of mass m is on an inclined plane with a coefficient of friction mu between the box and the plane. A man is trying to keep the box from moving by pushing up on the box with a force parallel to the plane. The box starts from rest and slides down the plane at a point, a distance b from the top, and then gets pushed back to the top where it uh, again is at rest. In part a, how much work is done by the force of gravity for the total distance the box moves? Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to first off tilt my axis to where my x-axis is pointed down, y is perpendicular, so that I can start at some x equals zero, and I can just deal with positive displacements. And so if I move a distance b, along the ramp's going to be x equals zero, this is going to be x equals b. Now your free body diagram is going to be slightly different depending on whether you're going down or whether you're going up. Because if you are going down, mg is still straight down, normal force is perpendicular, friction opposes motion. This box is sliding down, friction is going to be pointed up. Now the force that that man's pushing up on it is always going to be going up. Now if after it slides down a distance b, and then you push it back up, with the box going up the ramp, the only difference in the free body diagrams is now notice that friction is pointed down the ramp. It's pointed down the ramp because it's now opposing the direction of motion. And so once we have these free body diagrams, when I'm doing the work done by a certain force, I'm only looking at the x component of the forces, all the arrows that are pointed in the direction of my x axis. So taking a look at part A, it says how much work is done by the force of gravity for the distance the box moves. Well, if I want to find the force due to gravity, the work done by gravity, first I need to do the integral from 0 to b of your force of gravity with respect to x, uh, and then plus, then we're going to go from b to 0 of the force due to gravity, and your force of gravity is mg sine theta. Now, if I want to do the integral, from 0 to b of mg, and the reason I'm doing mg sine theta is that's the x component of mg. With respect to x, this is mg sine theta times b, and then if you do the integral from b to 0 of your mg sine theta, that's going to be, uh, well, mg sine theta times x, but like any definite integral, you plug in the top, minus plug in the bottom, and my top is 0, anything times 0 is just 0, so that's a negative mg sine theta times b. And so therefore the work done by gravity is the sum of those two works, which I take my positive mg sine theta times b minus mg sine theta times b, the work done by gravity is 0. And the reason the work done by gravity is 0 is because I start and I end at the same position. My change in height is, well, zero in the end. Well, let's take a look at part B. How much work is done by the force of friction for the total distance the box moves? Now take a look at this one. Going up and going down, notice how going down I made that a negative mu mg cosine theta, because the mu times n m is your mg cosine theta. And here I have a positive mu mg cosine theta. So I want you to think about that just for a sec. Why did I make this negative and that positive? For friction. But I kept gravity the same. I had this positive and positive regardless of the direction. And the reason is, is just like with vectors, just like with kinematics, just like with free body, just like with everything, everything's revolved around that axis. When I am going down, this force of friction is pointed in the negative direction of my axis. So you're integrating a force that is pointed in the negative direction of your axis when it's going down. But as we are going back up, look how friction is now pointed 
in the positive direction of my axis. Everything in this entire course, same with 208, same with forever in physics, is revolved around your axis, and as you get more complicated into physics, around whatever inertial frame of reference you set it in. But in the meantime, for our axis, going down, I'm integrating from 0 to B of the negative mu mg cosine theta with respect to x, and going up, I'm integrating from B to 0 of mu mg cosine theta with respect to x. And in this situation, going down, I end up getting a negative mu mg cosine theta times b, right? You integrate plug in top minus plug in bottom. And then for this one, when I integrate, uh, it's going to be positive, but when I plug in the top, that's 0, minus when I plug in the bottom, that's b. And so both these works are negative works. And the reason that it's a negative work is because it's opposing that motion. Think about it. Imagine if you're helping move a couch. You know, say you're moving out of a house into a new house, and you and your buddy are moving a couch, and your buddy decides to pull against you. It's opposing the motion. You're trying to get it out of the house. Your buddy's doing negative work, okay? Anything that opposes motion does negative work. He's not helping the movement. Whereas any force that's pushing it along, that's helping it move, does positive work. And so that's why the work done by friction would be the sum of these two works, which comes out to a negative 2 mu mg cosine theta times b. And finally for part c, how much work is done by the force exerted by the man for the total distance the box moves up? Okay, now this f man that I wrote, that's not a known that's not no. They didn't give me that force that he did. And so we got to come up with a different way than just integrating force times distance because I don't know what that force is. But that's okay because we know that our network, right, your network, your total work done is going to be your change in kinetic energy. Now, I started at rest at x equals zero. And then when I came back up, I'm still at rest. Everything is, starts at rest, so your change in kinetic energy is zero. And we said that our net work is equal to the integral of all of our forces. It's the integral, and so it's the work done by gravity, the work done by friction, and the work done by that man. And so the work done by that man is equal to the negative work done by gravity minus the work done by friction, which we saw the work done by gravity was zero. We saw the work done by friction was that negative 2 mu mg cosine theta times b, and so the work done by that man is simply just a positive 2 mu mg cosine theta times b. The only force, the only thing that was opposing his motion in the end over that total distance is going to be friction. Because gravity basically helped him on the way down, hurt him on the way up, which is why on the way down it did positive work, on the way up it did negative work, and so overall Gravity basically netwise did nothing. Friction opposed the entire time, and then this dude, well, he had to basically oppose friction <laughs> that entire time. Not the entire time, but the work done by the man is just the opposite of that of friction. So this example was really here. That way you can see how work is done um, and what I mean by integrating with respect to the uh, distance that it's traveling. In this case, it's traveling up and down the ramp. So I need to only deal with the forces that are going parallel and up and down the ramp. Join me in the next several examples and we'll get a little bit more complicated.